Hi there, how you doing? In this video, I'll be telling you how I gained my first 300 subscribers, why your videos and mine are not getting nearly as many views as we wish they were, where I went wrong with YouTube back in 2012, and my first vlog. Here we go. If you, if you like, like it, 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 I think I you think should you press like. like. Hey, so I've been having some interesting experiences, thoughts, all of those things, epiphany <laughs> about YouTube. <laughs> this is going very well. <laughs> I made these six videos during the lockdown here in London in April and May 2020, the beginning of June as well. Six videos for absolute beginners about how to get started playing the guitar. I'm walking around in a circle because I sort of get my thoughts off my chest a bit better when I'm walking. But I keep looking down because a moment ago I just walked straight into the coffee table and it really hurt my shin. The first video I managed to get up to five or six hundred views, which I was really impressed with. And that happened because I texted a load of people, a load of ex-students and uh, just about everyone just to say, I've made the first video. Here it is, please watch it, please subscribe, please share, tell anyone you know who might be interested in learning to play the guitar because we're all locked down and we're all bored. So let's have something nice to do. So five or 600 views, great. And, uh, and then the second one was pretty healthy. Around about the time the second video came out, I wrote a press release and that got included in the local paper. Not that it's a paper, it's a purely online thing. It's very environmentally friendly. That basically was promoting the link to the first video, so that boosted that and boosted the series, which is great. Not surprisingly, things started to drop off a little bit. So around about the time I did the third video, I was thinking, I don't want to keep bothering the same people over and over again by sending them a WhatsApp message saying, I've got another video. If they don't want to learn to play the guitar, they're not going to care. Or if they're already too good at playing the guitar, then they're not going to be interested in this absolute beginner's basic stuff. Oh yeah, so then I remembered that I got a mailing list from years ago, which I haven't really used for a long time. So I thought, okay, do a mail shop. There's about 400 people on there, and that yielded good results, you know, an extra boost. But again, I, I was telling people about the first video. So overall, the first video is the one that keeps getting all the, uh, the, uh, the attention. And of course, from the first video, the first video tells people what the series of videos is all about. Only if they're interested or find them funny or entertaining would they then go on and uh, keep, keep watching and watch the other ones, which makes perfect sense. Another idea I had for trying to increase the reach of these videos, because if you're spending all this time making them, up to 24 hours for some of them um, to sort of plan what to record and then to actually record it in a couple of different uh, setups in my flat and then editing is the, by far the longest part of the process. Having put that much time into it, it's good to get people to see them. It's a shame if people don't see them. And that was when I started to get more and more interested in methods to get people to even know that your YouTube content is, is there. If you if like, you it, like and it and you want, want more, more, you should you hit, hit subscribe. subscribe. So I had the idea of doing some uh, sort of fake celebrity interviews. Cheryl Crow, who is an actual crow. Jimmy Page, who is a page in a book. Silly, funny interviews. The idea is I'm bored, I need something to entertain myself during lockdown and I'm making something that I hope will entertain other people who are also bored in the lockdown. But even a big name like Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page interview, I thought that would draw people in. I, I thought it would like get the YouTube algorithm going. You know, people, people will be hunting for new stuff on Jimmy Page, maybe, I don't know. That was just my guess. That's been out for two weeks and it's got something like 60 views. Jimmy Page, 60 views? So that really got me thinking, okay, well, how does this work? What, what is holding my videos back? And it didn't take too much research to find out what the problem was. The problem turned out to be the amount 
lot of YouTube content that is uploaded every minute of every day. 300 hours of content is uploaded to YouTube every minute. That's why you can upload a perfectly good, interesting, informative, educative, is that a word? Educative? Educational video with a few laughs and some decent editing to YouTube and only get 60 views, if you're lucky. How is anyone supposed to find anything amongst that lot? Or perhaps the question for the content provider is how is my video supposed to find an audience? If you, if like, you it, like it, why not, why not share, share it, it with your friends? friends? So I started researching and I was quickly reminded that YouTube really, apart from being a platform for television, is a search engine. Google bought YouTube back in 2006 and uses its amazing, sophisticated search technology to find videos relevant to whatever the keywords are that are used by each person who searches on YouTube or Google itself. And I quickly found all kinds of information on YouTube itself and on other websites about YouTube strategies, SEO, search engine optimization, keywords, tags, cards, end screens, descriptions, titles. And I found that there are quite a few YouTubers out there whose content is about being a YouTuber. All about search engine optimization and how to get views and how to get subscribers. And at first I thought, that's odd. Being a musician, a songwriter, a creative person, I would have thought the only reason to make content is for the sake of the content itself. Art. You make art to express yourself. But then of course, what the hell am I talking about? This isn't art, it's business. It took me a little while to cotton on to the fact that if there is a way to make money that means that you don't have to go to work, you can stay at home. You don't have to have a boss, you can work for yourself. Then of course, lots of people are gonna be really interested in that. If you if would you like would to like support, support this, this channel, 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 why not, why not become, become a patron? A patron. On, Patreon. On Patreon! Follow the, the links, links below. below! I think that's why I have chosen to be self-employed for such a long time. I've been self-employed almost exclusively since uh, 2005. That's 15 years. And I have made vows to myself that I will never have a boss again. Sometimes I go back on that during hard times. And that I will never do a non-musical job ever again. And I have managed to stick to that for a very long time. Once that type of career suddenly exists, a way of making a living, of course lots of people are going to be interested in that. So they're going to want to know how to do it. So they're going to be interested in watching videos about how to do it. Of course, it all makes perfect sense after a little bit of thought. It's just at first it just seems so odd. It's like a snake eating its own tail. A YouTuber who only makes videos about how to be a YouTuber. Hmm. Now my first thoughts when confronted with the idea of having to become familiar with SEO techniques for YouTube was just, ah, oh God, really? You know, I like creating stuff. I like making stuff up. I like writing silly sketches and acting in them and filming them. And then the editing process I really enjoy, even though it's very long. Just making stuff I like. And this has been a sort of a, a, a repeated feature in my life that I do the stuff I'm interested in and I don't really bother with the stuff I'm not interested in. So I do the making, but I don't really do the telling. I do the creating, but I don't do the selling. And I'm not disparaging myself for that. That's my personality type. But at the same time, it does mean that money is often tight and certain things that I wish I could do, I just can't afford to. And that's... Hmm.
But I had some other realizations as well. I think I started my YouTube channel back in 2011 and I decided this is a good way of promoting my guitar lessons. This is a good way of finding new students, face-to-face -face students and students on uh, Skype. But anyway, I challenged myself to do 365 guitar lessons in 365 days and I managed to do it. I managed to record and edit and upload 365 guitar lessons in 365 days and I gained over over 300 YouTube subscribers and I think it was a pretty good system for gaining YouTube subscribers because I've told them that there's going to be a video every day but anyway I did it I did it I achieved it and that was all I did I didn't do anything with it and at the time I felt like I was kind of following in the footsteps of Justin Sandico. He already had a great system where he uploaded free guitar lessons onto YouTube but they were drawing traffic to his website where he could sell them guitar courses and where they were invited to donate via PayPal if they found good value in his guitar lessons. But in 2012, I had a sort of a defeatist attitude about it. I didn't realize it at the time. I just thought, ah, I've missed the boat here. He's already so successful and so are Marty Schwartz and Rock On Good People. They've got it sewn up. If anyone wants to know anything about guitar, they can go and look at these guys' channels and uh, they're gonna find what they need. I've missed the boat. Can you believe that? In 2012, I thought I'd missed the boat. Eight years later, there are all kinds of great guys with really successful YouTube channels like Paul Davids and Rick Beato and Retschel. And where were they in 2012? Did they have successful, thriving YouTube channels in 2012? Nope. <laughs> So, what did I do wrong? I didn't see that being a YouTuber was anything other than a way to draw an audience to your website to sell your products. And at the time, my product was face-to-face -face guitar lessons in person and lessons via Skype. I didn't have any other products or services. That's all I was uh, providing. That's all I was selling. I became a father four months after my 365 challenge was completed. So sure, there were a lot of personal reasons why I didn't persevere with YouTube. And also there just didn't seem to be so much reason to persevere with it anyway. But that has all changed now. It's a very different landscape now. YouTube is a real community. The idea of being a YouTuber is an actual career with people becoming multi-millionaires off the back of it. It's a very different landscape. So, in conclusion, what I want to find out over the coming months is can I follow the old BBC mantra, inform, educate and entertain while posting videos on YouTube about topics that interest me and grow my YouTube channel into profitability by providing content that is beneficial to viewers. Right now I've got 394 subscribers. I'd really appreciate it if you would follow my progress by hitting subscribe and by hitting the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Yay!